In this customer support video, we're going to show you not only how to convert a locomotive to access protocab, but some of the thought processes involved in determining where to fit the components. This conversion was carried out for a client who has very kindly allowed us to use the conversion in this video. As with all conversions, it's thoroughly recommended that you first of all work out the stall current of the locomotive to make sure that the motor does not exceed the capacity of the protocab loco control unit or battery. If you're unsure how to do this, we've prepared a video for you, which you can view also on YouTube on the same Access Protocab channel. Once we've confirmed that the stall current limit is acceptable, we can remove the body of the locomotive to investigate how much room there is inside. The body on this particular locomotive is secured by four screws between the fuel tanks and the bogies. Although this second user locomotive only had two screws fitted. Very carefully remove the body, noting that there are lugs at the front and rear of the locomotive to be carefully prized apart. Although, as expected, there is a large metal block to increase adhesive weight, there's a promising amount of room at the top of the block to fit the protocab locomotive components. Note also that I'm using kitchen roll paper to carry out this conversion, not only to preserve the paintwork of the locomotive, but also so that I can tape down the screws that I removed from the locomotive and note where they come from. Wherever possible, and certainly when I'm working on customers' commissions, I will try to change the original locomotive as little as possible. This is a printed circuit board on top of the locomotive chassis that brings together all the electrical elements of the loco. At the two extreme ends you have the wires coming from the pickups on each bogey. From left to right you then have the two connections for the motor. You have C1, which is the capacitor, and L1 and L2, which are inductors, that both together provide noise suppression. And lastly, a blanking plug, which can be removed to plug in a DCC decoder. If possible, we'll try to retain the capacitor and the two inductors, as these should have been optimised for the motor that's installed in the locomotive. We can unsolder the pickups at each end of that board and use one of those uh, ends for the motor cable to the locomotive control unit, if possible. The first step is a dummy run to see if the access protocab components will fit into the locomotive as it is, positioning in this example the battery and the locomotive control unit at one end of the chassis. In profile, there is a very nice little step at one end of the chassis and fits nicely the battery if it was turned upside down. However, replacing the body in the configuration you've just seen means that the body will not sit properly on the chassis, so clearly there's some interference, so that configuration won't be possible. The next attempt is to move the LCU to the other end of the chassis, behind the cab, but now the battery leads are too short between the battery and the LCU, so that configuration isn't possible. We also have to consider where to place the 9601 plug charging unit so it can be both accessible and not destroy the outline of the locomotive. My first candidate position is on the roof of the loco and is what I believe on the full-size locomotive is an air filter. And if we look inside the body, we can see that it appears to be a separate moulding, so it should be fairly easy to remove. If we look in profile, the gap between the top of the chassis and the roof may not accommodate the 9601 plug charging unit, and in any case the aperture would be at an angle. Another candidate might be the fuel tank underneath the locomotive but on inspection it's difficult to see where the aperture could be made that wouldn't be too obtrusive. 
even with the 9601 in different orientations, doesn't throw up any better solutions. And even trying to charge from underneath uh, is difficult because the plug would not fit between the two mouldings of the fuel tanks. While we think about where best to put the plug charging unit, let's briefly return to the position of the battery. And here you can see that the battery is rather too close to the printed circuit board so we may consider moving the printed circuit board along a little bit by drilling a couple of new holes. We're going to have to unsolder the pickups from the printed circuit board, so now is the time to unscrew it from the chassis. Taping and labelling the screws on the kitchen roll paper. Sliding the PCB as close as practical to the loco control unit gives about 4 millimeters gap at the battery end, which, which will be quite sufficient. I now unsolder the pickup leads, but leave the motor cables soldered to the PCB. If you wish to leave the pickups in place, then you should insulate the two leads from each of the bogies. In this case, I've used a blob of hot glue. However, in this case, I decided to remove the pickups so the first thing is to remove the bogies by unscrewing from the top of the chassis, remembering of course to tape and label the screws onto the kitchen roll paper. The bogies can now be removed from the chassis. You can pull the pickup wires through the aperture in the chassis. The pickups are screwed to the bogie moulding so it can be removed very easily. Because you're not going to be replacing them, the screws can now be put into your spares box. Before removing the pickups, I decided that there was some work to be done on the chassis block itself, so I decided to remove the PCB completely by unsoldering the motor lead connections as well. The chassis block can now be removed by unscrewing four screws. This exposes the rather fine Bula motor, but it also showed that the chassis is not symmetrical and must be oriented in the correct way. For the plug charging unit to be mounted on the roof, we need the recess where the battery is going to sit to be at the opposite end from where the plug charging unit will be located. And unfortunately luck is not on our side because the battery recess is the same end as the air filter moulding on the body. We can't simply turn the chassis from one end to the other because the fuel tanks themselves are not symmetrical. Fortunately the chassis block is symmetrical so we can open out the two smaller holes used to fix the chassis block to the chassis and we can reverse the chassis block so that the battery will then be located at the opposite end to the air filter moulding where the plug charging unit will be located. Having now committed to the roof as the position for the plug charging aperture, now is the time carefully to remove the air filter moulding and to carefully enlarge the hole to be a snug fit for the spigot on the plug charging unit. The limited space between the top of the chassis block and the body means that not only will we have to cut away all the extraneous holes and lands from the plug charging unit, we'll almost certainly need to cut a recess in the chassis block to secure the plug charging unit when the body is fitted. This was done by cutting a recess using a vertical mill, rotating at a moderately slow speed because Mazak being a very soft material tends to clog up the mill tool. Repositioning the PCB on top of the chassis block shows that the portion of it will need to be cut away in order to clear the recess for the plug charging unit. At this stage the decision was taken that the blanking plate would not be required so the PCB could be cut right back to the inductors. In so doing it left the tracks on the PCB disconnected so these would have to be reconnected again by soldering two brass bridges between the two tracks. The bridges were then insulated with hot glue, which was built up to provide a standoff for the PCB above the chassis block.
The motor leads were then soldered back on, and the PCB screwed down to the chassis block using the new screw hole discussed previously. The 9953 LCU to motor cable, which is included with the loco control unit, were then soldered to the two points marked motor on the PCB. The 9959 heat conducting pad, also included with the loco control unit, and which also acts as a gap filler, was then placed on top of the PCB and the loco control unit pressed into it, with the antenna facing downwards. The 9601 plug charging unit, having had the fixing lands removed, was then placed roughly in position in the recess on top of the chassis block. The body of the locomotive also has orientation spigots to make sure that the body is placed on the chassis the right way round, and these will need to be removed in our case, because the chassis block is now the wrong way round. With all the components now fitted, and the 9601 now pressed into place in the body, the time has now come to marry the body to the chassis. But calamity! Despite careful measuring and testing along the way, the body is not sitting down properly on the chassis. Something is interfering with it. After some considered thought, it was decided to dispense with the PCB altogether, and instead to use the 9970 noise suppression capacitor included with the locomotive control unit. Because I felt that the battery may be sitting a little bit too high, I decided to take 2mm off the shelf where the battery sits using again the vertical mill. Having milled out the recess for the 9601 plug charging unit and having lowered the shelf for the battery around 2mm, the 9953 LCU to motor cable and the 9970 noise suppression capacitor are now soldered to the motor cables which are connected to the motor through the chassis block. Thread two lengths of heat shrink first before soldering everything together. Place a piece of masking tape or a thin piece of plastic on top of the battery shelf to prevent wear to the battery casing. And remove the backing tape from the loco switch copper pad and finding a suitable place inside the body to locate the loco switch, in this case just behind the fan, Press the loco switch pad firmly in place. Place another piece of masking tape or insulating tape in the recess to hold the 9601 plug charging unit in place when the body is fixed on. Test fit the body onto the chassis to make sure that it sits properly down and also that when inserting the cable for the 9601 plug charging unit there is no movement whatsoever and that the plug charging unit is securely held by the body. After everything has been screwed back together, the last thing is to tidy up the cosmetic appearance of the locomotive by fashioning a plug from the moulding of the air filter using a piece of 2mm plastic tubing. Thank you for watching this Access customer support video. And if you have any questions or comments or especially suggestions for any future videos, please write to us at support at protocab.com.